first ones, actually. We'll be the first ones? Okay. So yeah. please welcome from the cold, snowy area of Indiana, Dan Montgomery. Thank you. This is our new logo for over the last year. <laughs> um, how many here have heard of Shot Put Pro? Maybe? Sure. A couple, yeah. Um, some of our other more popular apps are uh, Proxy Mill. Anybody use that? Oh, not many. Well, yeah, you guys. Um, we just released last week uh, a new update to Proxy Mill, and that's to go in conjunction with our uh, pre roll post product, which is a mouthful to say, but um, I'm going to run this little um, uh, commercial first, uh, and then we'll get into the actual app. Uh, this gives you a background of what uh, the, the pre-roll post application is all about and why we got into it. Oh, I, hold on. We're no audio. Start again. Pre-roll post is a brand new Macintosh application from Imagine Products that backs up your media to a local disk and long-term LTO5 tape while creating a visual index complete with thumbnails, proxies, and metadata. Do you have all of your client's media backed up and archived? Hard drives are great for delivering files to your client, but shouldn't be trusted as a long-term archiving solution. Pre-roll post makes using tape drives easy. It takes advantage of the linear tape file system, so tapes mount just like a hard drive, and no proprietary software or formatting is needed. Use pre-roll post to back up any files on your Mac. NLE project files, scripts, photographs, you name it. Even better, archive your camera cards in their native format using offload disks created in the field using Shotput Pro. Simultaneously, create an archive to a hard drive for your client while creating a tape for your library. All file copy functions are verified using MD5 checksum algorithms, so you can rest assured that the data is there and intact. Pre-roll post makes it simple to find and restore projects or a single clip from the tape. The visual index with proxy video clips can be browsed and played back easily, even from the tape. Combined with searchable metadata, it makes quick work of finding what you need so you can get back to editing. Pre-roll post works with off-the-shelf, non-proprietary equipment and any LTFS compliant tape drive. Archive on the go using a Mac with Thunderbolt and any SAS to Thunderbolt adapter. The pre-roll post archiving software can be purchased now at imagineproducts.com. Yay! <laughs> Hooray! Uh, so, let's get into it. Uh, I wanted to answer the, the gentleman's question from before. And one reason we got into this whole application, and, and don't let the interface deceive you, it is very simple by design on purpose. Um, we wanted to make this very easy to use and you know, easy to get results. Um, but it's like a duck on a pond. It's paddling furiously underneath the water. Um, <laughs> uh, we took a stab at this because um, a year ago, we were approached by a number of dealers that were, were telling us, um, gosh, one, you, you guys make this wonderful product called ShotPut. It can copy things onto tape, you know, onto hard disk. Why not just use that with an LTO tape? There's a new LTFS thing, blah, 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 blah. Well, the, the technical aspects of that, we got lured into it and we said, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll take a look. Well, you know, tape is a linear format. It's not a spinning media. It's not a, a, a solid state drive. So you have to do some things to really optimize that workflow to make it really work for you. Yes, LTFS means that it's the linear file tape system. You can mount a tape and see it like a folder on your in Finder and see the contents of what's on that tape. However, getting files onto that tape, just drag it in, right? and it'll write it to the tape. Well, everybody knows video has very big files, and then there's what we call lint. There's about a thousand tiny little files, right? And if you drag one big folder of all that stuff onto a tape, 
it's going to write it on there, but then it's going to go, go back and forth and back and forth to write an index for every tiny little file back in the index area. And what makes LTO 5 and higher different than the previous tape systems is it's a partition. So there's a, uh, there's, the tracks are divided, there's 80 tracks, and two of those are reserved for the index. And so it's writing the indices into the tracks, into the, the index area, and then the, the rest of it's reserved for large files for your content. So when you put a big four gig file over there, then it only has to write a little tiny pointer to it in the index area. Um, so all that said, to make this work well, you have to do things like pre-sort the, the files in a certain, you know, by size and by usefulness and decide where they're going to go and how you're going to put it onto the, the tape. You write rules on how to write to the tape. So it's a little more complicated than, yeah, I can plug this in and I can just drop files on it and that'll work to a certain extent if you want to be very crude, but really to to be able to retrieve files later on and, and search them and put them on there in a logical sequence and to optimize your time so the thing's not shuttling back and forth all the time, you have to have an application that does some logic. What this app does is makes it very easy. We said from the very start, you know, when we looked at LTFS, there's several components. There's the, the LTFS itself, there's an ICU framework you have to install. There's the various flavors of LTFS for the different manufacturers of hard disks or, or tape drives, I'm sorry. And um, there's a thing called uh, OSX Fuse, which mounts the user profile or this user experience so that LTFS shows up in Finder like a folder. That's all a lot of minutia for for someone to try to figure out how to install. So this application comes with an installer with all the links in it. It's a one click, it does it all. It puts it all on for you, everything. You can choose the manufacturer, what type of, of tape deck you have, and it'll install that flavor of LTFS. When I said we just released last week, we released version 2.0 that now supports LTFS, or I'm sorry, LTO 6, the newest one. Um, and LTO5, so you can choose between those two types. What's the difference? Why wouldn't I want just LTO6? It's the newest and best, right? Well, it's also the most expensive. Um, LTO6 will hold two and a half terabytes per tape. The tapes run about $100 a piece. LTO5 will hold one and a half terabytes. They run about $40 a piece. So for that one extra terabyte, you're paying quite a bit per tape. It is a, a little bit faster, mostly in the retrieve portion of the, you know, the tape deck speed. Overall, LTO tape decks run about, or they're rated at about 140 megabytes per second, sustained read-write you know, throughput. You can have bursts of writing, for example, double that. So you're in the range, you know, the connections, the mini SAS connections can, can handle up to about 400, 375, 400, something like that, megabytes per second. Um, so they can easily handle that kind of throughput, but uh, uh, the real advantage of LTO6 over LTO5, personally I don't see it, it's really just the capacity more than anything else. You can get into this whole setup. Our software is $500, it's $499 for the software. Um, the ancillary applications such as ProxyMill, if you want to write proxies, is $300. Um, the viewer is uh, $100, bucks. so you're talking, what, $800, $900 in that range. The DEX, the LTO DEX, run starting about $2,000 and up. So an LTO 5 deck you can get for a standalone desktop unit, a couple grand. Uh, so you can get in this whole thing for under 3,000. You can spend more than that on a single LTO 6 drive. You know, they start 
3,500, I think. Um, we have tested and we are partners with uh, Quantum and HP. Uh, so we have tested both of those. In fact, at NAB, we'll be in a HP's booth uh, to show off this new system. Um, and we're also an ADO partner. I mentioned ATTO. They're uh, the card manufacturer. They make interfaces for, you know, PCIe card to put in a tower, or, or they make a box that has Thunderbolt into it and many SAS out. The LT06, everybody was hoping the tape decks would come with Thunderbolt built in. HP said, no, we're not going to do it. The volume's not there. Microsoft hasn't caught up yet. So whenever you see Windows machines coming with those, with Thunderbolt, then you'll see it, is my opinion. Um, in the meantime, there are a number of interface boxes to get there. Uh, Sonnet makes one, uh, the Addo guys make one. There are a number of PCIe Thunderbolt boxes like uh, M-Logic makes one for, uh, I think they're $300 in that range, $300 or $400. Um, uh, Sonnet makes one, Lacey, they're into one now. Uh, so th there's a number of those Way, ways to get to that is, is my point. Um, so let's go into this before we run out of time. So very simply, this interface, you can choose to write it to hard disk. If I had a tape deck connected here, you would see that connection information and the log when I tell it to connect. Um, as we said before, you can do various types of file checks, MD5 is the most popular when you're writing it. Um, this application has the ability, as I said before, to create indices for each uh, set of files that you put on the tape. So we're assuming or we're targeting the video market. Yeah, you can put any kind of files on here, it doesn't matter. But if you are video specific, like most everyone in this room, then if you let this app determine the type of video for you, it's aware of all the kind of app or, or video formats that we're aware of, such as Canon and GoPro and Area Alexa and P2 and on and on and on, you know, XD Cam, all those kind of files, and it can figure out what type it is, create a five second preview, five seconds, not a proxy of the whole thing. And the reason for that is we, you know, when you're searching, you want to know, is that the one I want? This isn't for a workflow of, I've got to edit with the proxy, it's, I'm searching, I want to find the thumbnail, I want to see the proxy, yep, that's the one, drag it, retrieve it, get it back. Um, this is actually doing a, a database, uh, a SQLite database on the computer so of every entry that you write. So if I'm writing it to tape or writing it to disk or both, I can do both at the same time, uh, it's going to make an entry into that database locally and then I can search that without having the tape in the deck. If you're using LTFS in a manual way, you can only browse. Spotlight doesn't work to search tape content. Let me say that again. Spotlight does not work for searching tape content, so you can't do any kind of search other than browsing. So you have to have something that's m managing the metadata to figure out where things are. Uh, we also have the advantage of knowing what, where all the metadata is and all those video types, so we're extracting all that metadata, time code, file names, format, the, you know, all those things and writing that into the database. So that's all things you can search on later on. Um, and then, I'm going to turn this off, I think, but um, when you're writing these, these indices, it's doing it locally, but you can also tell it, hey, you know, every once in a while, back up that file and put it over on my server someplace else or up to the cloud or whatever. Um, and that way you have a backup in case your computer crashes that you can rebuild that, 
that index database. You can also down here, you can recover from the, the backup, meaning, oh, my, I've got my new computer, more likely than a crash. Actually, I've got a brand new one. I want to install this on it. I want to get my database on it. So I can just tell it to recover from the backup, browse to where the file is, and suck the file in, and it pulls over all the proxies as well, all the metadata, and you're ready to go. Um, you can do things like uh, have this email you when it's finished. Tape, writing to tape does take time. Like I said, you can, you know, you can generally get 140 to 200 megs per second or per, yeah, per second copied onto the tape. Um, so it takes a long time. If you're going to write a terabyte or two, it, it, you can wait. The naming means uh, these are just preferences that you're setting, so it's going to suggest these names for the various sessions and how you name the files and the tapes and such. When I put a brand new tape in the machine, it has to be formatted. It has to get striped for what you're doing. One thing that took us a while to develop this, you know, for LTO6 is LTO6 is backward compatible, so an LTO6 drive can read and write to an LTO5 tape, you know, and also an LTO6 tape. So it has to know what type you're doing and what your, you know, what the capacity of the tape is and, and when you're writing to it. Um, basically, the way this whole thing works is you just drag things in, say I want to, I want to back it up. It finds out what it is. It recognizes what types of files they are and lets you play them if you want. So you can preview what you're putting onto the tape. You can unselect the ones you don't want to back up. And it's telling you how many I found, what the size is going to be. Here's the suggested name of the label. And I can overtype that and make it anything I want. I can put in notes. Uh, I write it to the file. Away it goes. It's copying all those things. If it was making video indices, remember I turned that off because we don't want to take too much time here, it would be showing up in this area. It would tell you the progress of what it's doing creating the proxies. Generally, you know, if you're writing to tape, it doesn't matter because you have plenty of time to write the proxies and create them. If you're copying to hard disk and that's all you're doing, like I'm doing right here, you might, you know, be waiting on the proxies to get done to write them to the, the location. Um, so it's all done, it's verified, it's telling me the checksums, everybody's happy, and we're done. And so if I go into the retrieve mode, you can see the things I've backed up before, and this, and you can browse down the various levels. Yes, we made this look a lot like Finder because we figured that's what people were accustomed to. I can do a simple search and just do a few, you know, characters, and it's going to automatically tell me which ones are there. Um, and I can say, oh, that's the one I wanted, and drag it into the retrieve area. So it says retrieve. So as I get them all stacked up, when I'm ready to retrieve, I just say click, and then it'll tell me which tape to put in the deck to go pull them back. Um, note down here, there's a notes area. Remember, I could type in the notes. So all of these things, I can put a little bit of my own information in at this step or in this dialog. This also has an advanced query, and so you can get very specific about where to look for things and what the notes, if I'm searching in that level, what, you know, which things to do and how big they were and dates and all those sorts of things. So you can narrow your search tremendously, you know, and, and so forth. Um, there's also a print mode for the, the things you've retrieved. You can print out a whole, you know, listing of things in a lot of different ways and, and if you want to keep a manual print thing. Right off the bat, we had somebody asking for that, really. Oh, okay, I guess we'll do that. <laughs> um, you can set this up to do a schedule, so you can do, oh, I can point it to a folder of things I'm ingesting and say, okay, every so often, you know, on a regular basis, go ping that and 
back up the information that's in that area. And that's about it. So I'm, you know, I was surprised Michael told me I had uh, 250 minutes. Is that? Oh, yeah, that's like four hours. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> that's like four hours, right? <laughs> um, like I said, we had to update proxy mill to work with this. So the two are communicating back and forth as you're backing things up. It passes, you know, things for it to do in the background to make those proxies. This is a brand new interface for us. Uh, it's proxy mill four. Um, and so the way this works is uh, it has a, a sleeker interface. If anybody knows proxy mill before, um, it, it was organized differently. This has more of a one glance type of thing. So I can put in my watch folders. Proxy mill is a, uh, an automated conversion utility. So you can tell it, hey, watch this, this particular folder. And as files are coming in, getting copied with shot put, or I just dump them in there, whatever, look at that watch folder and process the files as they come in. Proxy mill and shot put are designed to work together. You know, shot put is very I.O. intensive, but doesn't really take a lot of CPU, whereas proxy mill is very CPU intensive and not a lot of I.O. So they, they work pretty well. So down this list, I can choose which things I want to search for, what types. If I, you know, I can select them all, but if you know specifically what type of media you're working with, it's better to just choose those so you reduce the search time of going through and figuring out what type it is before it starts processing it. Um, it comes with a number of built-in presets, and you can also design your own. So a preset to us means you have all these things that you can do. Uh, you can name it, first of all. You can choose the codec and all that. Um, you can output it to numerous locations. So I can have a, a, my proxy that I'm creating, or I could be upresing. I could take H, AVC HD and upres it to ProRes, for example. Uh, I can have it outputting to various places all at the same time. I can in, choose to include audio or not, or just you know I can just make a transcription audio file. Uh, I can also output a number of other types, such as uh, popular ones or WMV. Have a DNX, Flash, blah, 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 depending on what your customer <coughs> needs, that sort of thing. A lot of times people want to do burned in time code. So if I pop open my preview here, you'll see I've chosen this, you know, here's my time code, here's where it's at. I can turn on and off a color box around it so I can have it, you know, translucent or not. Um, and I can choose whether to include time code tracks or not. Uh, sometimes you don't want to do that. I can have a watermark, so you can put your company logo, for example, and put it wherever you want to on the image. Uh, you can have text, so you could type in your own text and have that come in, or you can have it you know, put in the name of the file. So it would burn into the file itself, into the image, the name of the file for you. So after I've done all those things, um, I can just go dump a file into it and process it. If I could find one here. I guess I could shoot close that. Let's go back over here. What do I have turned on? I've got uh, GoPro maybe. And we'll do one of the GoPros. Oh, here's my Cupid guys. Let's do Cupid. Um, so Cupid is actually a P2. Maybe I didn't turn that on. I don't remember. Uh, I do have P2 turned on. Let's see if he comes. There he comes. So you you see a little preview of the thumb thumbnail previews. I can pop those and and see the metadata for them, what types they are, and the time codes and so so forth. This is processing. It means in the preferences I've set it so that as soon as I dump stuff in here, it takes off and, and does it. I can disable that and have it wait, and then I can choose which ones to do and, and when they're done. Notice these guys are already complete. Um, and I think I've got these going over here to proxy mill out. 
and I had him named by, remember it was Cupid? And these guys are coming over here, and there's my guys. <sighs> Ron, and? With our watermark and all that. Um, a couple new features in this application. Uh, we have a, a tiny little app called Clip Stitch. You guys are editors, so this doesn't sound like that big of a miracle. But <laughs> what you can do is drag a number of files into this and say, here, put this one and put that one together and stitch them together in sequence and output a file of those combined. Why is that important? Well, a lot of digital disk recorders will chunk your files like at two gig level or four gig level and they're really all supposed to be one and you're chunked up. So you can just dump them all in here and let it do it for you. Um, you can also, in, in ProxyMill, there's a option in the settings to merge or spanned clips and, and stitch together entire things. This is just a manual type thing. We also added a new function called LUTs and or LUTs sync. And people that know what that means, there's lookup tables for the color, so you can choose the file I want to apply it to. I can choose the type of Kodak, color correction, ProRes, blah, blah, blah. Um, where, I'm, where that file is that I'm going to use to process it. And you can see the little preview of how these, the corrected versus the original is going to look. So this is a one-dimensional, a very uh, uh, manual type of thing right now where you apply this, you know, if you're dealing with the high pixel type media, apply the LUTs to it. Because a lot of times your customers don't want to see the flat files, they want to see it already, you know, with some color to it so they understand what, what it's going to look like in the end. Um, Today or tomorrow, they finish the 3D LUTs, so that'll be included by NAB timeframe. Uh, this whole application will be sold as a standalone application, as a way to apply LUTs directly. Uh, you can also, uh, at some point, we'll integrate that so it'll be part of your preset, so you can tell it, hey, after you're all done, apply the LUT to, to, a, to the my proxy to output it that way. Um, what, you want my preview now? How long do I have? We have. Uh, actually, I have four hours. Well, you actually are. Uh, time's up. <laughs> oh no! Okay, we got to show them this, Michael. Right. This is the Quickly. new shot put. Okay. This is what you'll see at NAB. Shot put Pro Five, and what's different about it? You know, first of all, there's a detailed logger that shows you all the stuff that you've done. Uh, offloading, blah, 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 and you can easily type in notes for those, and you can export the logs and all the different flavors. Um, it is much, much faster. It's 40 to 50 percent faster than the old shot put, and part of the reason of that, especially on Mountain Lion, part of the reason for that is we were using uh, Apple-provided routines in the past, and those tend to be very OS-specific. And so the current shot put was really based on lion, not mountain lion. And uh, at any rate, it's a long story. But basically, um, this guy is using uh, our own routines, and it's not, not going to have that problem. Um, we've reorganized these things by presets. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> should have said that. Uh, shot put Pro is a copy utility. So the idea is I have a uh, attached media, like my media cards or a digital disc recorder, and then I want to copy them to a number of places. So in each of these, I can tell it, how do I name those where do, and where do I output those? So I can make one to many, so I can make three or four copies all at one time, name them automatically by card name, today's date, you know, prefix, suffix, all those sorts of things, rather than use Finder. Uh, it also does uh, verification, so it checks each file to make sure they're exactly the same and gives you all sorts of outputs to that effect so you'll know where my preference go. 
Um, we got to wrap it up. Uh, got to wrap it up. Yeah. You can. It has a lot more different yeah. checksum types, um, European dates, logs, emails with you when you're done, blah, 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 blah. So this will be released next week, actually. Oh, cool. So it'll be an update. Uh, $99. $99? $99. Wow. Upgrade 29. So please thank Dan Montgomery.